Today, we're reviewing the La Sportiva Equilibrium Top. Hi there, everyone. I'm Jason. About a year ago, La Sportiva released a new mountaineering boot called the Equilibrium. It's designed to be the one boot you need for variable routes that may demand fast approaches, rock scrambles, and climbing in crampons. So I've been putting it to the test over the last many months and want to give you my take, maybe helping you decide if the Equilibrium may be right for you. First, there are three different models, all of which have Gore-Tex. The LT, which has a partial leather upper and is the cheapest option. The ST, which is fully synthetic and therefore the lightest of the three models. And the top, which has the integrated gaiter and BOA lacing system. I've been using the top model and so will limit my review to that version. First, when it comes to comfort, a few notes. Maybe the most obvious is that the top model's gaiter adds an additional waterproof barrier on the outer. That also acts somewhat like a vapor barrier and keeps the boot pretty warm. It's great around freezing temperatures, but is actually a bit too warm for temperatures above that. While I always carry extra socks in case I should need them with the equilibrium top, I made it a habit to change out my socks once in the middle of each day. My feet would otherwise be too swampy. That being said, the boots were warm enough to keep my feet a good temperature, even when spending long periods on snow, which is when cold conduction really starts to add up. However, it's not a winter insulated boot and certainly isn't made for extreme altitude or full winter conditions. I personally found the fit to be pretty good. My heel didn't slip. I didn't get toe jamming at all on bad steps. The toe box felt tight enough for me to feel terrain, but loose enough to be wearable all day. I did, however, get some rubbing on my right shin where the tongue stopped. After wearing a callus, it was fine, but it was an issue. I didn't have that issue with the left boot, though. Moving along to performance, my foot was very protected, rock hopping and moving through boulders and taking hits to the toes, ankles, and the like. I never got any bruising or cuts. The braking lugs on the heel are truly impressive. It may be the best footwear I've ever had for maintaining traction going downhill. Speaking of traction, I found the rubber's performance on rock to be serviceable, but not spectacular. It was pretty average bounding over rock, but when my soles got wet, the traction on rock got worse. That's typical of any boot or shoe, but if I called out my fell runners as the best over wet rock, and my Solomons as the worst, this hit right in the middle of that continuum. As far as performance on the approach, it is the best mountaineering boot I've ever worn. It's comparatively light at 24.15 ounces per boot or 685 grams, at least in my rather small EU41 size. It carries weight very well as I went on a few camping trips with my kids where I had to carry most of the collective equipment but it walks so much better than other stiff-soled crampon compatible boots. It has just a bit of rocker in the ball of the foot and just that little bit of bend makes all the difference. The amount of foot, ankle, and calf fatigue I experienced when covering miles over any type of dry terrain, it's so much less, it's not even comparable to other mountaineering options. But that little bit of give does come at a price and the price we pay is with crampon performance. When using crampons on, say, moderate snow, I noticed no difference in performance. But as soon as you get into truly technical terrain, that given the sole means more calf muscles called into recruitment when you're front pointing. I even went so far as to take the boots out dry tooling, admittedly something these boots are not designed to do, but definitely at the extreme end of front pointing performance needs. And I did notice a difference compared to other boot options. That being said, I was able to climb in them just fine, but I had to be very aware of how I was loading my foot and ensuring I was keeping heels low in order to save my calf strength. Also, the boot has a heel welt or step and crampon attachment, but not a toe welt. So your crampons will need to have traditional straps on the front. If 
Finally, when it comes to durability, the boot sole is holding up very well to half a year of use with probably uh, 100 miles or so covered. And the BOA lacing system is also lasting well, as the integrated gaiter, which is almost rubber-like, keeps the lacing and BOA knob very well protected. So far, the zipper has proven easy to use with no noticeable snagging. In all, I think the boot actually fits a nice niche in shoulder season climbs that would have early or late season snow that demands crampons, but with approaches that can cover variable and dry terrain. It truly has allowed me to ditch the approach shoe mountain boot combination, saving me pounds of extra weight to carry into my objectives. That being said, full on summer or winter conditions don't fit within the boots temperature range and likely will leave your feet feeling the elements one way or the other. Am I happy I added them to my gear closet? Absolutely. My favorite climbs are shoulder season climbs and this boot meets a real need that I'd been using workarounds for until now. Thanks for coming to the end of this video. Please hit that like button to help us get this review in front of others. Please ring that bell and subscribe, and you can check out our website at shortguysbetaworks.com to find gear lists, all of our videos, and additional thoughts and information. How do you handle multi-condition routes when it comes to your footwear? Let us know in the comments. We'll see you next week, and keep on getting more out of that big outside.